Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to set up and install PPSSPP, the PlayStation Portable Emulator. You can download and install this onto Windows and Android and it's pretty quick and easy to use. So let's get down to setting this up so we can enjoy our PSP games on PC with a whole host of options to improve the looks and appearance of the games. First of all, we're going to need the emulator itself. Firstly, head on over to Google or any other search engine that you use, type PPSSPP and hit search. We should come to a website that looks a little bit like this one. Once here, click on downloads and select your build. Now for this video, we're going to be installing the Windows build. So hit downloads and scroll down till you see the latest version. Download this to your desktop and make a new folder and name it PSP. Put your zip file in there and unzip it. You should end up with something that then looks like this. Now before we go any further, I just want to show you the folders. Firstly, if you click on Memstick, this will be where all your saved data is going to be located to. Now this part will come in handy in the future if you're going to be doing things like adding mods to games such as adding Bowsette into Final Fantasy for the PSP, as it is this folder that you will need to be messing around with. For now however, let's just continue as normal. You should see two options in the main menu that we've just opened up, Windows and Windows 64. Windows is if you're running a 32-bit version, and I think you have to use this for Android if you're using that, while 64 is obviously if you're running on a 64-bit version of Windows. I myself am using 64, so for this example we'll be using that. Just double click on what you're using, and the emulator should open like so. When the emulator opens up, you should see a menu that looks a little bit like this, but for you there won't be any games as you haven't installed any yet. Instead of what I'm seeing, you should see a menu screen which says something possibly along the lines of C drive, D drive, or however many drives you actually have. For now, exit the PSP and go back to the desktop. In order to add your own games, it is a had time consuming, you essentially need to turn the PSP on and tell it to convert to USB mode, put your game in, connect the PSP to the PC, then drag your game onto the PC as well. It's time consuming but it's not as hard as what it seems, it just takes quite a bit of time to do. Once you have done this and you have a game on the PC, you then need to make a games folder. I recommend that we go into the main menu and that in the PSP folder itself, make a new folder and you label it as games. Once done and you have your games in there, go back to the PSP emulator and open it up. Then simply click on to where the directory is so the emulator knows where the game is going to be and it should load up. If you have the latest version of PPSSPP, then you should hypothetically just be able to double click on that game and start playing. You see, this emulator doesn't have the PSP BIOS, which is great as it means you don't have to mess around with anything like that. And also the emulator is quite clever as it's auto configured to recognize most gamepads, so you shouldn't really need to mess around with any game controllers. It should just be a case of if you have a 360 pad, you plug that in and play, if you have a PS4 pad, you plug that in and play, and you can generally see a pattern forming. However, you do need to adjust a few things, and this is what we're going to be taking a look at. If we click on settings and backend, you should see that the latest version has Vulkan. Leave this as it is for now, as most games work on this fairly well. If you click on it however, you should get a menu that comes up saying DX9, DX11 or OpenGL along with Vulkan. For the most part, you can leave this alone, however this doesn't work for every game. 
Darkstalkers is a prime example. See, if you want to try and run this game, it won't really work. And as you can see, if you just double click on the game and load it up, this will be the results that you get. <laughs> You're ready. Fight. So, as you can see, something isn't quite right there. Now, in order to fix this, if we ever come across this in a game, you're going to need a workaround. And I've tried a few different things in the settings. When I've come across this in other games, because this has happened on a few other games as well, the way in order to fix this is, I found that the latest version of the PP SSPP won't do it and that the only workaround that I've found for this is you're going to actually need an older version of PP SSPP because with the older version of this emulator you had an option in the settings called mode if you clicked on that you had an option to change the buffering to the CPU or the GPU now with games like this where you had problems where the backgrounds would load and nothing else if you selected to load from the GPU it would say it's not recommended and that it's quite unstable. If you do this however, games like Darkstalkers actually work. However, the latest version of this emulator doesn't seem to have this feature and I can't find any workaround around it. So if you are going to have problems with games like this, it's also best that while you have the latest version of this emulator, you possibly look for an older one as well. So that if you ever come across these problems in other games, you can use this feature to essentially be a workaround. For now, let's go back to the main settings and see what we've got. If we click on graphics, we have the option of OpenGL, DX11, DX9 and Vulkan. Currently, if you're using the latest version, I would just leave this as Vulkan, as I've found most games work pretty much fine, aside from the odd few, which I've already said, you will need the previous version to have a workaround. You can mess with a few more graphics options, but honestly I would pretty much leave everything else alone as it's pretty much already set to work the best it can do. When it comes to audio, I would just leave everything alone as it works pretty much fine. You can change a few settings in controls if you want to, but again, it's pretty much auto configured so I honestly just don't see the point in messing with it. If you go down to network, I really don't know what this is actually for, as honestly I've just never really touched it and I wouldn't advise that you mess with it either. Probably best you just leave it be. Tools, again there are a few options in there but I would recommend you don't really touch them. System, you can change a few settings here if you like, but realistically I would just leave this alone as well. And it's basically that simple really. You honestly shouldn't come across any issues, but if you do come across any problems, just leave a comment below and I'll try my best to get back to you and help you on any issues you may possibly have. Well, that's it for this video guys. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and please subscribe.